All right. Well, thank you. Then now I'll call the call to order the uh, meeting tonight of the Deerfield Conservation Commission, January 26, 2023, 7.02 p.m. Um, go through the, uh, the background here. These uh, are being held remote on Zoom. Uh, meetings normally held at the municipal offices are being held remotely with adequate alternative means of public access and where required public participation provided in accordance with chapter 107 of the acts of 2022, which extended the governor's March 12, 2020 order superseding or suspending, sorry, uh, certain provisions of the open meeting law, uh, MGL chapter 30A section 20 until March 31 of this year, 2023. Uh, meetings are typically broadcast on the Frontier Community Access Television as well. Um, all the meeting connections and et cetera were posted onto our website. And so hopefully everything has worked and it looks like everybody uh, has had access to it and um, we can move forward. So um, let's call it order to the, so the meeting guidelines um, these are the overall meeting guidelines for the town of Deerfield. Uh, we ask you to speak one at a time, uh, follow the Deerfield Code of Conduct, which is to be respectful, to be considerate, courteous, concise, and non-repetitive in your comments. I will add just a couple of guidelines for the meeting tonight. Um, not too many are on, but please address the chair to be recognized to, to speak so we're not talking over each other. And then unless presenting, um, please keep your comments to a two or three minute time frame or less, that'd be great. Um, other than that, let's call the roll call of members. Um, do that officially, Kate Devlin. Kate Devlin, here. Sean Libby. Sean Libby, here. Uh, ben Byrne. I don't see Ben. Uh, Pete Law here. Okay, so we have... Um, at the three out of the five, so we're good to go. Um, just whoever is out there, I'm still looking for new members uh, for the commission. I have one opening. It's been sitting out there for a while, and so anybody wants to volunteer, to let me know. <laughs> um, um, let's see. First order of business tonight is to look at the minutes from 12-22-22. Well, there's a lot of twos in there, 12-22-22. Has everybody received those minutes and had a chance to review? It looks like yes. Any comments, any need for revisions? Nope. Nope, I don't see any. Um, Kate's uh, no as well, I guess. I wrote them, so. <laughs> no. no, good job. <laughs> I'm uh, ready to revise as needed. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, so then I would take a motion to uh, accept the minutes of 1222 as, as written. I will make a motion to accept the minutes of 1222-2022 as written. I'll second. I have, a, I have a second. Okay, motion on the table. Any other comments? Discussion from the commissioners? Okay, no. Uh, hearing none, we'll take a quick roll call vote to accept. Uh, Kate Devlin? Kate Devlin, aye. Uh, Sean Libby? Sean Libby, aye. Uh, Pete Law, aye. So that motion carries and we accept the minutes as written from the uh, December 22nd meeting. All right, so now we get to some new business. Um, the first one on the agenda tonight is to um, hear from Eagle Brook School on their Eagle Brook School field project introduction. Uh, we haven't received any formal um, application or forms for this, whether it's a RDA NOI, I don't know what they'll be submitting, uh, but we did want to provide um, who we have tonight is Wes Smith from Eagle Brook and I believe Tom Johnson from Proterra Associates, correct? Uh, and they'll do a, a quick presentation to give us an, an outline of what's going on and what we can expect, which is, um, which is great. Thank you for doing that early on. Um, so we can get uh, a sense of what's coming our way. Um, and then we can uh, 
see if we can move this along. But so um, I'll leave it to uh, Wes and Tom for whatever you want to do. And Amy, they may want to do some screen sharing. So I will let you um, take care of that. Great. Yeah, I, I think uh, this is Wes Smith um, on behalf of Eagle Brook. And um, I could um, just show, share with you a couple slides um, that just, will, you, yeah, I see that you're sharing them. Okay, great. Um, really just want to give a, an initial introduction to the project. Um, we, we fully intend to keep you guys busy this year. That's our hope. <laughs> um, so we have, uh, you know, a new dining hall project that's been on the horizon for, um, for a while now. We've been working through uh, initial design, preliminary designs on this part of campus. This is the Western part of our campus. Um, I think, do you see my cursor on the screen? Um, so the, the central part of campus is usually, is where our academic buildings are. This is our existing dining hall here. And uh, this is the, uh, the entryway to, uh, the, to, to Baines in the major parking area that's overlooking the sports center. I think, um, if you're familiar with Eagle Brook, you might be familiar with at least that part of campus. And just off to the um, south of that parking lot is where we're uh, proposing the new dining hall. We've been calling it Infirmary Field for a long time. And then there's a hillside just below that that uh, goes down to the playing fields. And you could see the, um, the sports center that abuts the playing fields. So. The building is about a, a 30,000 square foot building, the dining hall now that I'm speaking about. And we're really just trying to um, build it into the hillside. So it's not, um, you know, uh, a monstrosity on, on top of the hill as we're looking up from, uh, from the playing field. So at this level, which is basically the uh, existing level, the entry of this existing level is about the same level as the existing field as it is. And what you'll do is you'll walk in on that level and look down into the dining hall. So it, it, it is literally built into the hillside, like a, almost like a walkout um, feature. Um, and um, maybe we'll go to the next slide here that just gives a couple other just sort of um, perspectives of what the, what the type of building is. It's a heavy timber framed building um, and masonry building. And uh, the view on the left is, is uh, what it may look like looking up from the soccer fields and baseball field. And then the view on the right is just a, a, a view from the southern, southern side. Um, architecturally, it fits in well with campus. Uh, certainly bigger than our existing dining hall, uh, just as our existing dining hall, which is called Gibbs Building, uh, was constructed in 1969. And our student and faculty body were about half the size of what they are uh, today. So there's um, good reason to just to have more space in the, in the dining halls. It's pretty cramped when we have all of our students and faculty in there at, at, during meals. Um, so that's that's a little bit about the building and where we're at. We're, we're into construction documents uh, as we speak. We're putting this out to bid uh, this late winter and uh, early spring. So we're having this initial meeting now just to kind of get the ball rolling with um, the permitting process as we're hoping to have uh, to, to break ground, um, you know, over the summer, there's there's some other work that leads up to that. Um, that Tom could get into a little bit more about outside buffer areas and whatnot. But the the, the impetus is to is to get going with construction this summer, and then it's about a 17 month long project. So we want to hit as much good weather as possible um, and get weather tight before that following winter, and then we could button up the interior. Uh, finish up the landscaping the following summer and any anything else that would happen that fall before we 
occupy the building. Um, we, you know, looking at a timeline um, and backing into it, we're, we're hopeful that we're starting the process at the right time now. Um, we also know that typically these uh, types of projects would, um, you know, it's at most, it, it, it will be an NOI. Um, again, Tom will speak a little bit more to that, but often uh, a project of this scale will, will uh, go to a third party peer review um, with, with the Deerfield Conservation, Conservation Commission. So I'm assuming that will be the case. And when we um, actually propose this project to you guys, um, and I, I don't think it will be next month's hearing, but probably the following hearing, we were wondering or hoping or wishing to have a discussion with you about whether or not we could get that peer review rolling, um, you know, ASAP rather than presenting and then having to wait um, you know, for a series of meetings to to go, to first enter into agreement with a a, um, a third party. So just that's one of the questions I had in this meeting. If that's something that we could um, jump the gun on, I guess. But uh, Tom, if you want to talk a little bit more about the environmental piece, that'd be great. Sure. Yeah, yeah. Thanks. Um, um, like I mentioned, my name is Tom Johnson. I work with ProTerra Design Group. Um, we are the civil engineers on the project. Um, Lucas Environmental is, um, they're the folks that are, have done the wetland flagging and they're gonna be the ones preparing the notice of intent. Um, can you all see this aerial photo here? Yeah, got it. Got it. Um, just to give you a little real mile high overview, all the way on the left-hand side, just off the, um, just off the images where Route 5 and 10 is, um, this is Pine Nook Road here that heads up the hill. This is the railroad crossing here. In here is the main campus area. And then this kind of red shaded area, see if I can zoom in a little bit here. Um, that's where that, that new building is proposed to sit. Uh, it's kind of up on the hill. I don't know how familiar you are with the campus map, but the soccer field and the baseball field are down here. And this is kind of like Wes was indicating, it's kind of going to be built into the hillside. Um, you know, the, the new building, and then there's going to be some associate hardscape, um, uh, pavement, sidewalk, stairways, uh, you know, entryways into and out of it. M the majority of all of that work is, is actually outside of any wetland buffers. Um, there are a couple areas where we will, um, you know, be in those buffers. So, uh, Lucas has spent a whole bunch of time out there flagging wetlands. They flagged the stream down um, Pine Nook. There's a, there's a number of kind of fingers up the hillside. Um, mm -hmm. And um, with that, you can kind of see the, we've got here in orange, it's the 50 foot buffer and then magenta is this, uh, the 100 foot buffer line from it. So within that scope of work, um, in order to service this new building, we're gonna put in a new sewer line. And that's gonna follow down the existing driveway and then it's going to tie into an existing manhole on uh, Pine Nook Road. There's an existing uh, culvert that goes under the driveway, and the, the plan would be to to install a new line. You know, at this point, I'm thinking through the pavement. So, um, but this portion in here of the work would be something that would be covered under that notice of intent. Um, mm -hmm. but utility work in existing disturbed pavement areas is the. There's going to be some rework of the parking lot and drop off area. And as part of that, there'll be some repaving. <clears throat> so expect at least a little portion of it, you know, and, and then to be seen if, if we, how far we take the repaving down with the sewer line, but expect there'll be some uh, repavement work along with that. Um, and, and then the other piece, um, all of the new building stormwater. Um, it's going to have a series of green roofs um, that'll, that'll mitigate the amount of stormwater. But then they also, the hardscape areas are going to be collected and um, they're going to be piped and sent down the hill. <clears throat> this area right here is the, um, the existing football field. And our plan is to take the um, material that's excavated from the, uh, for the construction and the foundation. It's actually going to be a good size excavation 
we're going to take this material and use it to build up the um, uh, the level of the football field. Um, and in doing that, we're also proposing to put an underground stormwater retention system underneath that field. So that's kind of what these blue uh, rectangles are indicating. And then construct a new uh, football field over the top of that. There's a, you know, there's, like I said, there's a good amount of material coming out of the excavation here. Instead of running, an, you know, a whole bunch of trucks in and out, truck and dirt back and forth, our plan was to truck it down and use it on site. But with this, there'll be some grading work, some earthwork um, along this edge here within the 100 foot and, and to be seen once we get through the fine grading, but potentially into the 50 foot. Um, this is a, this whole area here is kind of slopes down. Um, I think over the years, these fields have been terraced into the hillside. You know, the, it's, the whole campus is on the hillside in order to flatten these out, they were terraced over the years. And then these are just the resulting um, seeps out of the hillside. Um, the other piece, um, in order to bring a construction equipment in and, and try to minimize kind of disruption, at least initially to the main campus area, we're going to um, have a little hall road that comes through the maintenance area in the back, a little staging area, um, and use this to work from the maintenance area in instead of from the main campus area over. So there's, there'll be a hall, hall road construction. All of that, I think, is going to be outside any buffer zone stuff. Um, just wanted to, it was great. Thank you for, for you know, allowing us to come in, get, just give you a real mile high introduction to the project. We're working through all the grading and disturbance numbers and, and all those uh, pieces of it. And um, we'll be putting that into the notice of intent. Um, town administrator have her hand up. <laughs> Amy, do you have a question or uh, hands up on this? Yeah, screen? not a question. I just wanted to say that. Um, we can certainly go ahead and you know start sending out uh, requests for peer review once we have um, you know some plans or things that we can send them so they know the scope of the work. Uh, we just did that for the planning board so that again you know we can expedite things and hopefully have some quotes for the first hearing that you could look at. Um, so. Yeah, That'd be that'd be excellent. That's that's really our goal. You know, as you can imagine, it's a school project. The kids are out at the end of May. By June first, the goal is to have shovels in the ground. If if we're waiting till July first, we just missed, uh, you know, half of the or third of the summer construction season where the most disruption, at least the initial mobilization stuff, would happen. So um, we're really trying to push to to make sure we're on target for that. So things like um, you know, lining up a third party peer review so that, you know, for the first hearing would be a, a great way to kind of cut out maybe a, a, an extra hearing in the middle. If, if that's yeah. Sure. Um, just then, like I said, if you can send me documents that uh, I can, you know, have the peer reviewer look at so they can give a quote, um, I can start that process. Um, yeah, we need with some of those documents and with the, the hall road and the uh, additional septic system, I would think that we'll probably have to get into the planning board as well, right? Um, um, I don't think we fall under the planning board. Okay, um, just a building project. inspector? There's, yeah, there'll definitely be a building permit process. Mm -hmm. um, and I and there may be some tie together between, they'll want to see the conservation permit, I think, before issuing the building permit. So yeah, okay. That usually works. And I, I'll... Um, I'll double check on that as we get closer with uh, Annalie and the planning board to make sure they don't have anything. But what we try to do, if there's both boards are looking at it, we can combine the peer review into one under one sure. consultant so we can get it all done at once and not yeah. do it as a step manner. Uh, and, quick question on the football field, where you're going to put uh, additional material and, and right now you have some of that within the, I believe the magenta is a hundred foot buffer. Um, is that uh, stormwater management system already in place there uh it's not so it'll it's be those not. will be new kind of underground chambers um this is the kind of the toe of the ski slope in here so yeah. as we as we come up we're also going to kind of shift over and away 
and, and away from the wetlands a little bit. Um, but these are, you know, it's is still 50 feet from, from where we are and from the existing top of slope. So we'll, uh, uh, um, this though will, um, you know, it'll control the stormwater and then it'll outlet. Um, yeah. Down in well, the yeah, that, that'll definitely be a peer review. And within the town of Deerfield, stormwater stuff does come under the planning board and not the CONCOM. Um, so that's why I was kind of thinking about uh, their input here. Um, yeah, the, so they're, oh, sorry. No, go right ahead. Um, in, in thinking about that peer review, you know, there's obviously a whole lot of wetland flags out here. Yeah. Um, and they're there now, they've been surveyed in now. Um, there is some snow cover up on that side of the hill now, but um, a lot of these are um, kind of channelized. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and particularly the bank and stuff in here is, is um, pretty easy to see even with the current ground conditions. Yeah, um, it's um, there's a lot of a lot of water coming off that hill in different spots and yeah, you comes know, through these swales and different channels. You're right. That's really kind of one of the efforts of this new building is to make sure there's kind of a robust system in place now to control it, but then mm -hmm. also a place that for any future work. Uh, we have a place to send it and then control the, the outlet from it going forward. So it's a it's kind of a big a big step, but it kind of goes along with this this big new building that's going. Okay. On. Yeah, the other blue box is a future work that uh, Wes was talking about. Maybe that we're going to yeah, see. Yeah, <laughs> there's some there's some you know yeah. potential other stuff happening in here too. That's, okay. That's master planning down the road sort of stuff, but. Um, yeah, it is. It is an interest to us but, uh, in, in the conservation commission side because it does come off that hill quite a bit, and then coming across towards five and ten, there's other swampy uh, 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 shrub swamp areas and different things that contain. Um, we've been doing different work and trying to really figure out just where all that water does end up and go. So um, this is uh, hey, very interesting. Yeah, Pete. Anecdotally, we were working with. Um, the town um, as well on on the Pine Nook Road and the Eagle Brook uh, water that's coming off. And we know that that watershed is maxed out at this point. Um, we're actually working with the town on uh, on on managing that and okay. which is one of the reasons why um, we were making the effort to send the water to these other channels yeah. that are not going to um, overload the watershed and essentially the as you know, the stormwater system will slow it down, so it's not impacting it and causing any more. Um, yeah, no, that, uh, those are all interesting aspects to this. That um, just going further downhill, I, I <laughs> we have some other things going on, so that's great. Um, right. Good. Um, so, the, as far as a third-party consultant, is your is the typical consultant that you would bring in? Uh, a wetland scientist to come walk the line and check the line and look at flags, or is it a someone to look at the stormwater, or somebody that does both? Um, or... For for us, because the stormwater is separated to planning board in the town, so for us it would strictly be on the uh, a wetland specialist scientist coming through to to verify delineations and and so forth. Um, I push it out early to the planning board to see if they have interest in doing anything further or if they're going to be involved, yes or no. Um, so we can get all, you know get it all done under under one review. So that company would do both the um, the wetlands delineation assessment as well as any other project development kind of assessment that may be done. So so you, we're trying to work together to combine them. So. You know, yeah. we don't get yeah, the, the wetlands delineation it. done in another 30 or 60 days. You need something else. And then it's another 30 or 60 days kind of thing. So um, just a couple other notes I had here that were, I believe the hearing we're, we're aiming to, to, to make is the March 23rd one. Okay. And, and then um, with a couple of weeks before that, probably being around March 9th was the, the target to, to at least get the NOI stuff submitted. Um, three nine for plans that's the that's the goal yep okay so we have two currently two um 
wetland companies, um, review companies on on board, and they're pretty quick in getting back to us on that. So I think we had something by, you know, a couple of weeks ahead of that 323 meeting, even if it, it lasted that way to 39 before we had information, I, I think we can get um, some proposals back on, on what they're looking at. Yeah, and, you know, I think we, you know, we have preliminary stuff too that would even allow the conversation to start. It won't, it won't have all of the detail in there yet, but it might at least start get them close on understanding the overview of what they'd be looking at. So. Yeah. So Amy, let's uh, over the next, you know, few weeks, month or so, just, you know, put a, um, at least a, a, a feeler out to our consultants that this may be coming and we have some preliminary information. The final one may not be to overly much, but we'll get it on their books. Um, Cause I know in the spring, those everybody gets busy. Yeah. Oh, for sure. Yep. Um, you know, the other kind of question I had here is, um do you typically want to do a site walk and mm -hmm. would you typically do that um after uh, it's filed just before that first hearing um you know we're we're pretty flexible and you know all the flags are out there now and and we have a good sense of where the proposed work is so we'd be up for walking it you know anytime between now and and march um but it seems like another one of those items we might be able to to, to kind of front load in the process if, if it makes sense. Yeah, I th I think we'd want to do it well before the three twenty two uh three twenty three meeting. So sometime probably early in March, we'll let the snow go and see where we're at, and that helps us. But it, it's always good to do you know a site visit, get a sense of what it looks at, even if it's before when the peer reviewers come in. Um, but that would be. Um, Certainly, something we would want to do. Um, so, Pete, I just want to remind you: if you guys are going to do a site visit um, with more than two people, it has to be posted. So, if right. you, you know, just let me know, and I'll make sure it gets posted, and you're all legal yeah. tender and all that. Yeah. So, if we do more than two, I think we have to do a seven-day notice and. All this fun stuff to okay. keep us out of uh, wearing orange. <laughs> we'll do rock, paper, scissors and see. Yeah. <laughs> um, I think that, Wes, I think that really kind of covered it. And, and uh, we really just want to come in early here and let you know, give you a mile high overview of what, what was coming down the pipe. No, it really helps. And uh, we can check some of our overlay maps on top of this one and just see kind of what we're looking at. And um so if, uh, are you set with the presentation then? That's it, yeah. Let me uh, yeah. see if I can stop sharing. Okay, so I will um, yeah, push it out to the, the other commissioners. Uh, any other questions uh, from Sean or Kate on at this point? Not at this time. Looks like a good proposal. Okay. Kate, you're right. good? Yeah, no, okay. no, no comments, right? And for yeah. it's amazing, there's nobody else on the call tonight, so I'm not going to. I won't have to take public input. So I think we're good to go. So All right, th thank you very much. This was informational only, so I uh, greatly appreciate it, guys, and coming this early and gives us a heads up, and we know what's coming. Great, thank you very much. Have a good night. All right, take care. Thank you. All right, no, just down to the. To the group of us okay um so the second item item um on new business is the uh 470 greenfield road emergency certification um that i signed off on i'll give you some background on it um i think if you look at the meeting i can look at the um uh, i can share my screen i think here someplace um, can you see that map? Um, oh, no, I didn't hear sure yet. I gotta hit that. Yeah, okay. Um, so this was um, brought to my attention by uh, John Petrori, Chief of Police, as a um, as a safety concern, and also from the um, public health, uh, as a public health concern. Um, this is right, if you look at the area here, 
right probably in this area. I think the next map probably shows it a little bit better. Um, it's this, this is where um, uh, Bittersweet is. Okay, and so this is the area um, just south of it. And this is actually on the, the back side of the hill coming off of what we were just talking about. Um, and this is listed as a um, a shrub swamp uh, on the DEP wetlands uh, area. So this is a wetlands area. Um, we're expecting, you know, standing water there a certain amount of time of the year. Um, and we certainly had a lot of standing water. Now the emergency uh, certification was brought to my attention from the chief and from the DPW um, as issues with behind, I can't zoom in on this, I don't think, um, but behind Bittersweet, they have their leach field and there's a road across the way um, from uh, Savages on that, uh, which your leach field is right there. And the water was building up on top of, and if you guys want to see pictures, I have a ton of pictures. I sent them into the file. Um, the water is building up over the leach fields, the septic systems, as well as um, coming down onto Route 5 and 10 up by the um, little country store area. Uh, it was all kind of connected there and there was icing. So so that was from the police department as there, there's a safety concern we got water coming across um, and from the um, Department of Health, it was the septic systems being underwater. Um, so we got called out there and the first site visit was on December 27th of 22. Um, and I met with uh, Chief Pachorek and uh, Kevin, hmm, I can't think of Kevin's last name, uh, from the DPW um, to review the issues. Um, and what we were looking at um and it was really it was really quite high in this whole area the water was right up to the back of bittersweet building i mean right up to the very back of it and there's a little access road going to the savages home over here uh, that was underwater um, and the leach fields were covered uh, in addition to that right about in this area um, don't have quite the right map, but there's a culvert that comes across uh, Route 5 and 10. As you go by, you can see it's kind of like a little fenced in area. Um, and there's a culvert that comes across into this, uh, which is also a shrub swamp area that turns into a deciduous uh, forest swamp area. So this is all wetlands down through here. And this is farms owned by... Um, um, of the savages on their um, their turf farm areas. And so it's right in that area. Um, the culvert that came across the road here, when we first looked at it, it's a 36 inch culvert. Um, it was completely up to the top of the head wall. Um, it was backed up that much. And what we found was just on the east side, coming in at the end of the swamp because everything kind of flows this way, if you will, this is coming down the contour. Um, there was an old debris um, dam there. I'm assuming it was an old uh, beaver dam because uh, we did see actually very new activity from beavers. Um, some of the um, trees cut down and so forth. Um, and so we had, we can't do Conservation Commission can't approve taking out beaver dams. It has to go through public health and then the DPW, uh, but they um, approved um, taking out that beaver dam. And so um, with the help of the Mass DOT, which was, have been up to the site a few times uh, to look at the culvert, um, we got the approval from the Board of Health and, and so forth to remove the debris dam. Um, and also right next to the end of the debris dam, they pulled out like a little trench area uh, to lower, to get the flow coming in. In Wapping Brook, uh, it might be on this one. Wapping Brook comes in right here. And, oh, this is where the culvert is right here. Um, and the Wapping Brook was flowing pretty well. 
Um, that was coming in good. And then it comes, what was coming out of here was all stuck up behind this debris dam uh, and not flowing. And this is the culvert. And then it comes over here and they had already, X number of years ago when we had all the flooding, there was a, a trench that was built out this way and then pushed it into this swamp over here. Um, so we opened up the area coming in right about here. We have a good flow from mopping and uh, we didn't, didn't have to do any work up in the in that little brook it came through pretty good opened up this and it popped through and we were able just with the hydraulic pressure of that amount of water uh was able to push through some of the um the culvert back up in the sediments and now it's probably hmm, eight to ten inches below the top of it and flowing through uh pretty regularly and um back in this area here where the shrub swamp is um and i can show you the order should have done that first i guess um so there's excessive water backup extensive siltation and debris holding water back um deerfield highway department police department board of health and so we worked it out that kind of did it in a phased approach because um, there was a little bit of push to like really go at it, clean out everything, both east and west and, and open it up. Um, but what I kind of pushed to them is removal of the siltation dam, uh, removal of debris and silt, backing up water of the properties of 470, 472 Greenfield roads. And I asked them to pull the material back up and flatten it out up on the, the flat area so it just doesn't go back into the into the brook. Um, it includes a stream bed from Wapping Road, but only as needed. And like I said, we didn't really have to go into that area at all. Uh, and on the south side of four, of Greenfield Road, underneath 5 and 10, uh, which includes cleaning the culvert on both sides. So they did have the state in there at least once, maybe twice, with their... Um, hydraulic cleaning system kind of push it through uh, they couldn't get anything to go through it um it wasn't working it was that it was that bound up with sediment um and with the hydraulic pressure from the water that we took out it did kind of clean it out um but we did include clean the cover on both sides which that's a, a mass dot issue and then the phase two and it was only if or as needed in this uh emergency thing uh, ended on 125 so yesterday um, we didn't have to go there but the water is clearly unable to dissipate or flow uh, we we're looking at removal and siltation over to fuller swamp brook which is on the west side of that area that comes in comes right um you see there's a little uh, bridge over um oh, what's that road gate in the back of the the, the fields um well mill village is for yeah mill village yeah yeah it cuts right down through there and across yeah. there into the field so only as needed um and there's a and it picks up over there as an intermittent stream actually about halfway through that sh uh, shrub swamp um so we didn't have to do any of that so that's what we signed off uh myself and uh uh dick Halikoski from the board of health and we went forward with that. Uh, I've been out there probably eight or 10 times since reviewing everything, taking a look at it. And um, so I'll take questions about that. But what we really need to know if you have questions or you think there needs to be any amendment to that. Um, but with any emergency certification, it needs a ratification by the uh, committees, commissions. Like I said, I got plenty of pictures to show you if you want. And the water level in the swamp probably went down about 12 to 18 inches at a time when there wasn't a lot. You know, when it first started, there was a lot of the rain and we had a week or so with nothing. So it did go down, but it's still, that whole area is still underwater, which that kind of swamp should be for this time of year. So. I guess so you were those 
traps that are the silt traps that are that you can see from five and ten those got cleaned out um or what are the silt traps well those big wire fenced in areas on either oh, side of the... i found out what those fenced in areas were what are um, they <laughs> they were put up when uh, it was quite some time ago yeah. uh, when the culverts were cleaned out by mass dot and a citizen unnamed uh, was worried that someone might fall into it um, and get sucked okay. into the culvert and so the state put up fencing around it so they're people traps not <laughs> <laughs> people traps i guess um <laughs> I hear that state may be like, well, we don't need those anymore because it's, it's, we may take them down. Um, but um, that's what I understood to be the reasons why they were there. So there's no, there's nothing more than a open 36 inch culvert that is pretty full with, with yeah. stuff. And it, there's not really a, um, there's no great elevation change. Uh, if I come all the way from the top of the swamp, to five and ten where the culvert is uh they they ran the um the numbers it might have been five feet yeah yeah there's not much know, there. total um so there's a lot of sedimentation yeah that happens in that area so i'm actually hoping that mother nature takes it out with some reasonably good um scouring of of things but i also wanted to maintain that um that swamp yeah. And I, and I had another email to uh, the chief and to DPW to say, you know, this is what it is, what it's defined as. It should be wet a good chunk of the year, uh, not authorizing any major takedown. And, and, and they were all on board with that. And so I think um, I think that worked out. But um, there may still be, as we come into spring, there's one question still as it comes to the west side. So as soon as it comes over there, uh, okay, on the west side, it immediately goes south, maybe yep. when, like 10 yards out. And it cuts across that into that wetlands area, which is a huge area, which I think is a tremendous amount of water holding capacity. Yeah. Um, although that right at the end of that, <laughs> just before the fields, there was another beaver dam. Oh, boy. Um, which they did have the beavers removed from that and the dam taken down. I think they took out three or four of them. And so that was backing everything up into the area as well. Um, so the town has a, a beaver guy on hire. I don't, <laughs> but he's all official and licensed and all that. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so um, that was released too. And so now it's a pretty good flow coming through there, but there still might be an issue on that side uh where the farm fields come in that we can't create flooding onto their fields if that's an issue but it's got to be a good oh god i've been out there a few times probably a two to four foot elevation from the yeah, base a bit of, of, a, the, yeah. of the wetlands to the farm fields yeah and that wetlands is another few acres out there um that I, I think has a lot of holding capacity. And that's why I was trying to get them to hold off and look at phase two, so. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, so that was a process on that, I believe. So can I, um, can I just say that I moved to ratify the emergency certification form that was initiated on 12 2022. That works. Do you have a second? I'll second that. Okay. No further comment. All right. We'll take a roll call. Kate Devlin. Kate Devlin, aye. Sean Libby. Sean Libby, aye. Uh, Pete Law, aye. So that passes. Um, and that one's setting in place. If anybody wants to go see it sometime, let me know. <laughs> <laughs> um, so the next two items are um, a couple of letters. Um, the last meeting we were, we talked about a letter to uh, given to the state reps asking for extension of remote 
meeting allowances. Um, they run out in March 31st of this year. Um, so a number of communities and a number of boards and committees have, have are writing to our um, our rep and our senator um, to do that. So this is the letter. Um, it's kind of standard on behalf of the Deerfield Conservation Commission. I urge you to further extend the governor's March 12, 2020 order suspending certain provision of the open meeting law uh, beyond its current expiration date of March 31, 23. A little bit of rationale, as you know, highly contagious variants of the COVID-19 virus that are capable of infecting fully vaccinated individuals continue to evolve. Due to the continued risk of contracting this disease, we request approval to maintain our current practice of holding remote public meetings. This process helps to ensure the health and safety of both our commissioners and the public. Uh, in the interest of uh, protecting the health of the public, I sincerely hope that you will consider our request. Um, that would be signed by me. Um, so I just need to know if you want any changes, if you agree, if um, this is acceptable to you. Fully acceptable to me. Definitely, I agree with that. Okay. Amy, do we have to vote on that kind of letter? Um. I I think I can just sign up, but I just I want to make so. sure. Yeah, I think you can sign it. I mean, yeah. you know, you can yeah. we approve. Do, just as a point of discussion, do we have any sense of how other community members feel about virtual meetings? Uh, are we? I think they're great. <laughs> I like ending the meeting at home, but. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if that's keeping some people from going in because they refuse to get on to a computer or if this is actually far more accessible, especially to those with like accessibility issues um, or even, you know, like they can't drive themselves to a meeting. You know, I do we have a sense of where Deerfield is uh, in terms of they want us in or they they're fine with us not being in? Um. Amy might have other, uh, you know, other additional mm -hmm. comments, but in talking with uh, Casey, uh, the administrator, um, they're fine with it. Um, the select board and so forth are doing hybrid, so they're there, but they allow. And that's another option that we have, even with, I think, the wording of this legislation allows for, it doesn't have to be just remote, but hybrid. So we can have people call in, but we may at some point um, this spring, summer, find ourselves the commissioners going to the town hall for the meeting. Um, but then, you know, there's a big screen for other people to come in. So that kind of allows for both sides, Sean. But overall, just anecdotally, I, I think we've had more in jumping into some other meetings, more input, more um, attendance during Zoom than we had during, you know, the years of our in-person meetings. But that's just, I don't have the don't have the stats and the details on that but that's anecdotal yeah. was really what i was asking for and you've been around mm -hmm. long enough to know that you know more people are showing up to weigh in on our shoes this way which i don't feel like we haven't had people weighing in um or asking questions so i just yeah. was wondering and it really makes it nice for sharing screens and looking at maps and data and things so um i think we may end up like i said in the hybrid mode um so we may have to be there or may decide to be there in person, um, but like tonight with the Eagle Brook presentation, they could be on the screen and, and put it up on the screen and and run it from there. But um, Amy, what are your thoughts? Because I know you work with other commissioners, commissions yeah. as well. Um, yeah, the other um, commissioners do the hybrid model. And, you know, on those, some of the, not all the commissioners are there. I think that's allowed, um, mm -hmm. but obviously it's, <laughs> if it's going to be a hybrid, you want someone there. And um, I know what Anna Lee does is she brings a laptop and she can put things on the screen. And as you said, the presenters put things on the screen. And, and I think probably, yeah, you get more attendance when the remote um, attendance is possible. Because, yeah, lots of people, you know, and especially if people are older, they don't want to drive at night. Um, if you can attend from your home, <laughs> it certainly makes it much easier for the public to participate. 
works for me nice <laughs> i'm definitely in favor of the zooms <laughs> all right makes it, it makes it a lot easier to slide home from work quick eat dinner and then hop on zoom yeah so yeah it sounds like you guys are okay so i'll, I'll uh, sign those off uh, amy if you got those letters ready i can stop in okay. tomorrow or next week sign them and okay. send them off because we if it's like last time when it came up to be due last i don't know whether november december sometime it came up to like 11 50 p.m the day it was due and the governor signed it off so i mean it was like no time left oh yeah this is cool so. uh, yeah <laughs> um okay so the next item is a um request for a letter of support for the open space and recreation committee um this is a request from um on Sweetland, um, the Deerfield Open Space Rec Committee completed a seven-year master plan uh, with the help of FROC. Um, and we'll file it with the state soon and current letters of support. Um, this is a a, um, a link if you guys want to take a look at it. It's um, 156 pages. Okay, I was going to say 157. Okay, I corrected uh, 156. You might be right. It's, <laughs> it's big. <laughs> and there's a few items in there that um, I think for our, uh, our commission, we should be aware of because I think there's some overlap and so forth. So I need to study it a little bit more. Um, but Allison from Frock put a uh, letter together. Um, and the letter is basically saying that we support it. Um, and I signed that off and sent them in. But you know, it's a good document <clears throat> if you have a few hours um, to take a look at. Uh, there's a lot in it. There's um, you know a lot of good good ideas for for the town going forward, and some that definitely, like I said, have overlap. And I, I will study it more um, at some point. Yeah, I didn't realize the town had any land. So is the Pocumptic Ridge property that that you're a board member of is that a town property or it oh, mentioned, the, yeah, it mentioned the, town land that had had umass students out doing inventory work and was accessible for trail work and that side of the sort of the thing that a concom can get their teeth sunk into white hat yeah. stuff you yeah know, info and, uh, kiosks and yeah and i've talked to some people on the or members of that and other things that we're talking about very just discussions um on the side is like you know can we get um consistent looking signage for trails or the signs that we want like we still have to get back um to um treehouse and what we want them on some of their signs on their pass so can we get like a sign template or design it's the same no matter where and what signs go what and so getting down to some of the nitty-gritty um but yeah and it's um yeah it, it's interesting that way um sean i think there's a lot of things that can still be done and um i know with the going back and forth more with the planning board um uh, we're trying to discuss things more that, that there may be some over overlap here as well so we sent that out. I sent that out uh, on the behalf. Anything else on those? Okay. Um, old business. Um, yeah, uh, just an update. This is only for information only. Um, just an update on where Sunny Days ORAD stands. <clears throat> um, so it has been recorded at the Registry of Deeds. Um, so it's in, so the ORAD becomes a NORAD or something, I forget. Yeah. Um, but that's in, been recorded. We are still waiting uh, on them for their NOI. Um, although they have submitted a site plan and a stormwater management plan um, to the planning board and to the building inspector. Um, so that is at the town hall. If you want to go in, you can start taking a look at where they 
they're going to place buildings and such, but we still haven't seen the NOI. Um, there's a meeting with the planning board on February 6th in a couple of weeks, week and a half, um, to review it because they have put in the um, site plan, uh, there's a special permit needed, stormwater management. I'll probably attend that. Um, if one of you want to attend, you can. We just can't have more than two of us on there with the uh, open meeting issues. Uh, but just to let you know, still moving ahead. I don't know when we're going to see the NOI. I would have thought would have maybe even been here by now, but maybe they're waiting to see what the, the planning board's response is before they take the next step. What was the date on the planning board meeting? Um, February 6th. And that's probably seven o'clock. I'm not quite sure. Yeah, seven o'clock. Yeah. Less anyone who wants to attend. Keith, that's all yours if you want it. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I have been really bad. I told Annalie that I would try to attend all their meetings. Like she often tries to attend ours just so we know what's going on with each other because there's a lot of overlap. Um, but yeah, so I'll attend and let me know I if can, anybody else wants to be there. I can try. Um, okay. I'll, I'll put it in, put it down and hopefully be able to go. Okay. All right. Um. So just some other general discussion items, um, special terms and conditions. I sent the uh, revised out there to you all some time ago. Um, we updated 7, 14, 15, 21, 29, 27, 42, 44, B, and 50. Um, some of them were like, updated with new language. Some were, I think I just removed as we decided. Um, I would just, either now or uh, by email, just, um, you know, feedback whether this version, uh, Rev 1 on 1 1 2023 um, meets, meets what we need right now. And I don't think, again, I think this is just uh, an internal document for our use to help us when we have to make some of these special conditions. So I don't think we have to vote on or anything like that. Uh, but I want to make sure everybody was comfortable with the um, where the draft has written. I I am. I think it's because we can we can always revise it as needed. Yep. For a particular project, I think it's a great starting point. Um, yep. And you know, as we and we can we can it's nice to have some of the terminology and the or the wording put together. <laughs> for certain things that we can just pull in. Yeah. And the changes are what we worked through in the last meeting, which was pretty extensive. Yeah. And that was even after you'd done so much work prior on putting this together. I think it's okay. really well, well done. Unless, I mean, I'll read through it to make sure there wasn't anything that surprised me, but uh, I thought it was really well done. Okay. It's, yeah. It's, um, just let me know and then we can I work with Amy to figure out where we put it, but at least it's um, available to us. And some of the stuff, um, it's just great. You know, I've copied and pasted and popped in here and this is what we need, you know, like, um, so if that's good, I guess Kate will, will take yours good as is, but if you wanna take a couple of days of comments, feel free. Sean, if you can give me some comments in a couple of days and then um, we can get it to Amy and maybe get the, the draft off of here and put a, uh, a new revision date on it and um, make it kind of a document and then we'll have to see what's going on. And I did check with uh, our town administrator, Casey, and the wording was, yeah, as a, a commission, we can put this together and use it as we see fit. Um, doesn't need any further legal review or whatnot from what I understand. So I'm all about legal reviews. I want to, be, I want to keep myself safe. <laughs> the lawyers will tell us when we've done it wrong. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> I know. That's what I'm trying to avoid. Um, the other item on a general discussion was uh, 670 River Road. Uh, this is again for information only, uh, but this was um, 
fellow at 670 uh, name Kevin escapes me. Burbo. Kevin Kevin Burbo um, reached out to us to kind of see if he needed to do anything or not. Um, so I kind of err on times when people reach out like that to do kind of a courtesy call, do an upfront one, you know, before they have to spend their money to put an application in or whatnot. Yeah, I just, I don't know. hopefully it's within all the regs, but I just think it's a nice civilized thing to do. Um, so anyway, so myself and Sean did a courtesy visit um, two weeks ago, last week. Geez, I should have wrote down the, the, the date, I forget. January 18th at 3.30. On the 18th, thank you. Um, and one of the concerns from the applicant was when they looked at the um, wetlands area um, in the maps, they're not within a wetland zone. The Connecticut River is several hundred yards over here. Um, the rest of it, farmland and, and so forth. So I looked at um, you know, the mass GIS maps and, and so forth. They were not in the, there's no wetlands in the area, but the one building that they wanted to move was on the very upper side of a potential um, being in a floodplain. And the floodplains come from FEMA and they're, they're called the FEMA um, polygons, I think. And um, that one was listed as basically, I don't have the wording right in front of me, but basically, eh, we don't really know. <laughs> might be a floodland, it might not be. Um, so there's no real determination on that. Um, so really, I don't think we, as a conservation commission, we don't have much to do that. Uh, the floodplain issue would go to um, the planning board. There might be a special permit for that. And the rest of it would go to the building inspector. So um, we've kind of moved that off to uh, the building inspector and the planning board. Uh, the planning board would have to look at a special permit if they wanted to do something. And it's, it's literally taking an old barn off a foundation and putting a new barn on top of it. Um, but whether he goes forward with it or not, I don't know. Um, but we've had no official request to review any application or anything. And um, from what I've looked at the maps and stuff, I don't think we would have jurisdiction over it anyway. So that was just an information that we did do a, a site visit out there um, last week. Uh, any discussion on that one? Questions? No. Nope. Okay, great. No, no questions. Um, we did have one piece of mail. Let me tr get down to that. Um, the client. I don't know what that means. Um, client change uh, preparedness conference um, in Washington. Yeah. <laughs> um, so it's just letting us know that if we want to spend a lot of money, we can go to a three-day event in Washington um, <laughs> relative to climate change. So if anybody wants to go to it, we're going to have to go through a lot of um, <laughs> a lot of hoops and stuff to get money approved for that. And uh, But just want to let you know that one came in. Anybody want to attend at the moment? <laughs> Sounds like an Eastern Mass sort of a thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I agree. Uh, and this was, was. I think uh, this was not on the items uh, within the last bit that I got it anyways, it's been 48 hours. Um, but the planning board, I believe. I said this is an internal uh, request. Yeah, it came from the planning board. Internal request for comments. Uh, they send it out to all the different um, boards that may be involved here. So we get that uh, from the Conservation Commission. I can get comments in, in a couple of weeks. Um, basically, the comments are we 
don't really have any comments until we see the NLI. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, um, oh, I'm sorry. I was just going to mention when you were talking about sunny days before, um, the documents, you know, the, there are paper documents in my office if anybody wants to look at the site plan and the stormwater stuff. Um, they're also, they're posted to the planning board meeting event at the moment. So if you went up and clicked on the planning board meeting, you can see links to those documents. You can take a look at them. Oh, good. So they're on the, uh, the site already. Great. Yep. I just spent a few minutes looking at them the other day and kind of as we knew, they're just looking at putting buildings on their little islands of areas that Dry are not in the wetlands. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Literally every square foot that's not wet, minus 10%, <laughs> will be filled with parking lot or building. <laughs> yeah. It was interesting. Let's see how it goes. Um, we also, I think, um, Amy just got this to the uh, the deeds the registry today, um, yep. right? And it's got submitted that we can continue with our electronic signatures. So that has been in and signed, uh, notarized, and all that fun stuff. So those are the all just say three or a couple unanticipated things. Any questions on any of that stuff? Okay. Um, upcoming meeting is scheduled for February 23rd at 7 p.m. Um, I will be returning from vacation that day. I think I hit the airport about one or two o'clock in the afternoon. Uh, I should be able to attend, but I may, um, I forget what it's called. I have to go back to have it someplace, but I can make someone else's uh, official leader of the, the meeting. So I may need one of you to do that um, for that date. I think I can still attend, even though I don't, I'm not in charge of the meeting. I'm not sure, <clears throat> but I know I'm just going to be, <clears throat> you know, probably the last minute and I'm not sure if we're flying southwest or not, but it'll probably be late. <laughs> so um, yeah. I'll reach out to you guys to see if um, if I have to do something with that. Okay, we were ready uh, for to do that one other meeting um, that ended yeah. up not happening, but oh, and I, oh yeah, because I think you were set to go with it, Kate, and then yeah, and then the technical same, difficulties that all yeah. went down the tube or something. Yeah, yeah, that's when I was out. Uh, yeah. So I have to look back at that and find out what that exact legal term is, but I just have to sign off something to make one of you guys in charge. <clears throat> and I don't know too much coming up for February yet, unless we get the NOI in from sunny days. Sounds like uh, Eagle Brook will be uh, in March. Uh, we're still waiting on the veterinary facility. Uh, which there's a small spot there that they have to come to us on. Um, New Pro is moving along. I'll have to check in with them once in a while just to see if everything's going good. Um, yeah, otherwise I think we're moving along with stuff. And I wonder about New Pro today. Um, do we... I. <laughs> Do we, do we check on these jobs ever? Um, and I asked because with the rain on snowmelt uh, event that we had today, I went and checked a bunch of jobs in the woods and found a bunch of problems, you know, because we just have a lot of water right now. Um, do we, should we be swinging by a new pro site just to make sure water's flowing and we're not pooling up or... Do we do that? <laughs> Isn't that, are you we, doing that? We don't do that well, and I think we should do that. And one of the things I talked to Amy about months ago is trying to set up a just a spreadsheet of all the different projects we have and where they stand in their, <clears throat> um, the process and what the status is. Um, you know, a lot of when we say we're gonna do something, we have to be out there within so many days, do we do it or not do it? Um, so we did that one where we, we signed them off 
uh, you and I, Sean, did that one. Um, but yeah, I you know I think follow up <clears throat> dates on some of these things could be really really good to to have done. Well, um, I thought of it, and I thought I should just drive over and just swing through the parking lot. That way, even that sort of cursory check, you know, we were expecting someone to let us know if there's an issue. Right. Um, but sometimes when water's coming out of everywhere, you know, the issue can be identified by others. Um, yeah. So. And I think within our we'll double check again, but I think we have, you know, ability to go on those sites at any time. Yeah, you probably just have to check in at the building. Yeah. 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 We just have to let them know. That's all. But I think, you know, going forward into the new year, um, it's a great aspect. Um, <laughs> we keep getting surprises like somebody wants a uh, certificate of, uh, of compliance completion. And like, where did that come from? You know, we should know that and have it on some kind of, you know, calendar, you know, some kind of spreadsheet of kind of knowing where we're at. And, and I got to write up for the um, town meeting for the, the town report, you know, what we did last year. So now it's like, I'm going to be asking Amy, how many NOIs did we do? How many RDAs do we, but uh, how does that compare to previous years? All that stuff is, you know, needs to be, um, I would love to get more structured. Yeah. So if, if you, anybody wants to volunteer to help out with that, raise your hands up. Actually, I was going to say, I, I have started um, the spreadsheet. You know, I sort of, in my, you know, spare moments, I work on this stuff and I'm starting to have more spare moments. Um, so that that is a project that is happening. And also on New Pro, I can tell you, Bob Walden goes over there on a fairly regular basis. Um, I'm guessing he's probably not looking for the same things that you are, but uh, if you want to ask him to, you know, keep an eye on certain things when he goes over, um, you can certainly do that. Yeah, no, that'd be great. You know, I think we want to, um, it'd be great to get um, our visibility a little bit higher in some of these things in within the community. So. But all it takes is time. Yeah. No, nobody on the commission was at the groundbreaking. It was uh, just Mr. Hilchy, right? Yeah, I did not make it. And actually, and I, I, I sort of had a little bit of second thoughts whether where the regulatory body should go <laughs> to that or not. So, but um, yeah. something came up anyways. I couldn't make it. But yeah, yeah. But you can see the select board would. It's a good, good chunk of uh, new tax revenue for the, for the town. So, yeah, but, yeah, but we should follow up and do more of that, that kind of activity, get a little more organized. That'd be great. Well, I will swing by just like more, more routinely on the jobs when you know there's a lot of water coming out of the ground. Yeah. I think of these things just because of what I do. So I'm like, oh boy, today's a day. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. It's like I said, I've been on the, the one up by uh, Bittersweet probably 10 times, just walking out there, taking a look, and half the time someone else from the town or the state is there, we catch up on things, but it's um, ongoing. when you put, put eyes on to something, it makes it a lot easier. Yeah, I kind of, I keep an eye on uh, the other end of that, uh, down by Mill Village, where it goes under Mill Village, the, oh, good. I guess that's Wapping Brook. That yeah there. right but i kind of look at it from that angle <laughs> yeah well good 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 um just totally um, another unanticipated i guess but i we are in budget season and i have to get the budget in for the commission uh tomorrow <laughs> it's supposed <laughs> to be done this week friday is the last day um i'm going to try to increase our budget because we have basically nothing um and we do we had a very busy, busy year so far this year i got the number someplace about 40 some percent of it though is postage sending stuff in and out um and then training uh was a big chunk but i'm also because we're on so many different sites um i'm going to see if i can get some extra money for uh safety vests uh when we're out there um uh, whether it's an industrial site or on a highway or something like that um that should be done 
And um, I'm also thinking about seeing if we can get specific um, just log books that would be kind of owned by the town. But if we do a site visit, we do something else, we're putting a log book, as long as you're on it, it's yours. And when you leave, we'll take it back to the town. And then, and then Amy has a much more of a record of what actually went out, what occurred out there. <laughs> that makes sense. So a couple of things, but I mean, it, we're, we're scraping uh, pennies and dimes here on this one to get some extra money. We'll see what happens. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, um, if you get log books, I would suggest if you get something that's loose leaf, then I can like scan them in and we can have a scanned record. I know, you know, you want to write in it while you're out in the field. Um, I don't know if they make such a thing, but. Well, there's right in the rain lot. paper. Yeah. Yeah. Right. It, but that's a little awkward in the field. Yeah. I know. Unfortunately, I have two or three books that I have in my truck all the time. I'll grab this one. I'll write this down. And then the next time I'm like, oh, I grabbed that one. And yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it is all really public information, I guess, what we do. So just some thoughts, but uh, we're moving forward with trying to see if they'll up our, our number a little bit for next year. Uh, I was thinking uh, if we have, if whatever it took to train one of us or at least to get some of, well, I, I, it would be nice if during the next year we can add one more member, I mean, that would be yeah. great. And yeah. so whatever that, whatever that additional cost is, I don't uh, foresee myself doing a lot more training Um necessarily through MassCon, uh, but I may be adding some of those courses just through my regular work. Um, that way the town doesn't have to pay for it. But um, unless there's something really amazing that comes along uh, for a workshop, but. Yeah. Yeah. Some of them have been kind of lame actually that I've been attending, but we do pay the MACC dues and, and so forth. So, um, but that's the only other thing I got to do tomorrow <laughs> uh, as far as ConCom. <laughs> gotta get that done early so i can get skiing um yes. <laughs> other than that anything else from anybody no no amy do you have anything for us no i think um i think you pretty much covered it i i was just going to mention i you know in hatfield the town clerk often will solicit people who just happen to wander <laughs> into her office to fill committees but uh you know, I think you guys would uh, do, and I, you know, I speak from my experience being on boards in Hatfield, you know, if you can think of people that you might want to recruit, people who have some experience that would be helpful to you, you know, you might want to try and yeah. recruit people. Yeah, I think I, an environmental lawyer would be great. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. 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 I got a few ideas, but they're not panning out. And so, right, well, if you ever if you ever want to send them, I, I will um, vouch for the fact that you guys are um, you're a good committee, and and your meetings are actually sensible and um, productive for the most yeah. part. <laughs> well, for, the most me. for the most part, yeah. Nice caveat. <laughs> um, yeah, seriously, yeah. <laughs> You guys get stuff done. It's it's good. Good. Okay. Um, other than that, if there's no other comments, I think we can adjourn if we take a motion for that. I will make a motion to adjourn the meeting at 821. I'll second that. You beat yeah. me to it. <laughs> I was all ready. <laughs> so motion on the table. I don't see any additional comments. So we'll take a roll call on that to up to adjourn uh kate kate devlin aye sean libby sean libby aye pete law aye and that's a wrap